Okay, now it's time for tonight, Haunting Hour Vlog. And um, much like last week, it's probably gonna go up uh, last few because it's gonna go up a little later because I'm I I'm watching a stream while I was on. And of course with the way I'm uploading it now, it's gonna take a while to upload so. So today I got the code ARGV, and the title of which is a lie because there's no pirate can look up the code. ARG. What do you think of when you hear ARG? It spelled R A R G, like H H H, and something like that. ARG. There's no pirate. It's like why call ARGV no pirate? Like what else do you think of? You know, whatever. Written by Jack Monaco and directed by uh, Alan Harmon. I think that was the name. It's a new director. Which uh cool. Um well and uh, Jack Monaco is actually I, I don't know if I should claim up any of my favorite writer because like the uh <clears throat> flight and I think I can't need to say on my on my case. Uh flight. Uh and Bob Creepy episodes as well. But go, how is this one fair? Well let's go over the premise. We have a girl whose name I do not remember. But she is played by Chana and McLean, conscious of called Chana. And basically, your parents are being sort of a free spirit type who want to look up a lot, but they end up being sort of reckless. And they, I get impulsive, they buy like old RV and so we can go on a bunch of road trips. And of course, they caught it. For the apparently part of a family that have an RV, and they were dying for a accident, and and now a good chance they might be haunting this new RV. So that basically the kind of like a haunted RV, um, and you know what? It was pretty good. Um, it you never know, after near condition, it couldn't actually have a cool, creepy episode, but I can show I could did the trail after in it. So there's a little humor in it. And primarily with her, I do, I think I should I'll talk about the I think I'll talk about the uh, creepy news. I'll, I'll talk about the uh, They mix it in with the scaring nicely. It's an episode that flows pretty well. Though I do think the. I'll get to the ending in a little bit. Well, I won't spoil it, but I'll get to it. Um, it flow rather nicely, and I thought the humor was well played. I mean, it's not even too over the top. They have a few lines in there, but with acting in the particular episode, I guess, really, it's. Good. She got a quick line, and she got a good country with the adult. And they work pretty well, you know? She has some, like, for fun, fun humor go get flow. It's like, it's there, but natural, you know? If people are talking, we're gonna crack jokes, and it makes sense in the situation. But, unlike my replica, it keeps the tension high enough, and it gets fairly creepy. Nothing huge until the end. But it works. I know some people might not like that, but it glow. It's nothing huge, and it's gonna happen, but it's not quite as bad with other episodes, you know? You know? It's kind of genuinely funny, so I don't really mind that too much. Um, and you get a ton to say about this one, it is, uh, without going into detail. It is a very simple episode, but it's got some aspects to it. That make it more interesting. It's called the parent being free spirit type, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not quite hippie, but almost. You know, they, they, I mean, they, well, they, they get in the episode, she books a giant for the big test the next day, and they, they all drop the books, do this. And it's not played up in a way like she needs to loop it up or anything. She and she's trying to get into college and whatever. She needs to change to worry about this stuff. And they are more concerned with being on the road and whatever. And the next day, they got tests. They wanted to basically get to school and play, play hooky. And, well, and thankfully, that did not happen. But it was like they do toy for the idea, you know. Like, so they are that type. And I can't believe the parents don't like that, and I figured that might be a problem in it, but it wasn't. I mean, it does, they, throughout the episode, they do kind of, as she talked to him, hey, the RV might have gone wrong with it. They don't believe her, but it works, not because of her attitude, but because in a situation, it'll make sense. I mean, you know, and most of the food she had, and the RV doing creepy ish things while they're not there, and she can't exactly. You know, and I do like the they they had that. Nah, that's nice. Um, it it's it fine. Um, and I do think that's gonna turn people off. The fact the parents go not good parents, but at the same time, I don't think they go overboard with it. 
I thought they might ever have, I think, I'm afraid, that I'm afraid they might have a record gang over there on the right, so you need to look it up. They don't do that. But at the same time, they don't really go with, they, I think, I thought they would go with the moral that, while being spirited in one thing, you shouldn't be too reckless, you shouldn't have to buckle down. But they don't go, they only go for moral, I mean, they go for, let's see, I mean, play out, it's kind of obvious, they probably have a costly tale, of course, going on, but they don't really explicitly take any moral. Which I kind of like, could get leaked open for interpretation, and they leave make it so for it go. At least there's no bad moral there, I mean. Yo, gotta give them credit for that. You're fine. Yeah, I give them credit. You know? I just thought it could just flow nicely, you know, with the way the humor plate into the creepy kind of thing. It's a very simple epic that works really well in terms of creep factor. As far as Jack Monica can go, it's catching one of the lesser ones. More of it, it took a structure, it's more like a ghostly stare, and it's trying to scare and get more like Foreman Norman. Give a good movie graphic for it, and that, and I would co at Cowboy, which I did, even got you wooden dark, which is much of that would tend to be. But go on, the Gurren Banning, they are dark, they are kind of cracking, they are very really creepy, and the top code keeps with the creepiness. Like, I do think it, if for top code to put any sort of humor, I think, for a couple. One liner can come way up the episode, but good for that code to nobly have humor. I mean, code can we hack it, but it's sort of overplayed by the western thing. But I think it worked here. I mean, you seem to know when to put it and when to keep it creepy. As far as the director go, fine. It actually directing that truly not better than I thought would be. <laughs> nice. The ending. It's really, really creepy. Uh, third, but most of the ending have been normal, but they could have third really disturbing ending, which I thought was really cool. It dragged on a bit. Like, I can it go on a little longer than it probably should, but at the same time, it gagged with nice, really slow build out, like, really creepy. And the twist I kind of saw coming, primarily because very good story in The Haunting Hour that it reminds me of. I can't say what it is, because. Actually, I'm gonna say it. The Halloween Dance. And, uh, if, whatever, if you read that story, you probably already know what twist is, or at least the nature of it. And, um, and, and, and including a certain event happened, I figured, hey, I think I know what's gonna happen. And then, it does. But it's still, they play it out, it could go a little long, but every time they do it, fine. And I did like the way the client sort of, it's just like a well-structured episode, it escalates fine, and... You know, not a huge, it's like a show where the climax can probably also be ending. Because it's not a climax then I think comes down. Usually, and that would end right after a big climatic defeat, whatever. You know, the whole time, and I think one of them got the good. So, overall, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good episode, I'm like, okay. It was creepy enough for me, I had kept the tension high for most of it. Um, I they had a nice drawn out disturbing ending. China had some good lines. Uh, the humor was well placed, and if, but I mean, with the parent, the best parent, at least they had an ending that was a beagle enough go it go teach them a lesson in some way. So, I guess last week episode was a bit more lighthearted. It's not that that because it's a little darker, not too dark, but creepy enough. Like you, when you watch it, you know it. Kind of a creepy episode at all being called humor. It does, it does, it does go normal creepy episode with a few funny guides. That's how I would describe it. I go, yeah, yeah, I look, I might get under 12 minutes with time. It's a nice creepy episode, got funny moments, nice structure. Uh, not one of the writer's best, but it's still not the weakest. I like this more than Ghost and Stare and I don't know, I, I, former Norman, I think it's more like that one. Um, they can turn up like how much I enjoy it. Go. Uh, good for time director here. Go. Seriously, why well, call Arg Eve? No pirates, it's Arg. I mean, what else do you think of? It's kidding, that's what they will you okay Arg with, unless, or, or SpongeBob, that pirate, so. I mean, Jack and I mean, God, the Robin Williams RV had more to do with pirates than this one. <laughs> that, that, that's a good one. I can't remember. That's a dumb movie called RV. 
Um, but that's all I gotta say. Next week should be, well, I'm not gonna tell yet, but it's not because I probably should have heard it more to if it sounds accurate. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good episode. Uh, China, I think I mentioned her, she was good in it. She was fine. Uh, yeah, I got, actually, I've always appreciated, you know, her time, so, yeah. No whole lot to say, so, um, yeah, not one of the most insane episodes, but definitely a creepy one for the Hingen. Um, so, yeah, so I'll see you next week.